Welcome back to Queer Justice. On today's episode, LGBT youth homelessness, we'll be touching on the heavy subject of the homelessness epidemic in America, and specifically among queer and trans youth. As always, I'll be providing you terms, findings, and experts that will help you understand this epidemic. Know that by watching QJ, you are never expected to remember everything. So please do reach out to us for any questions. So some people may ask, why is queer justice important? It's important to know that not every community is accurately represented in the media. I was inspired to create this show out of the need to accurately represent my community. This is Jay Daniels. In the magic field. We let it all out when and welcome to Queer Justice. Let's first define homelessness. It is the condition of people lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence as defined by the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act. Homelessness emerged as a national issue in the 1870s. Many homeless people lived in emerging urban cities such as New York City. Into the 20th century, the Great Depression of the 1930s caused a devastating epidemic of poverty, hunger, and homelessness. There were two million homeless people migrating across the United States. The number of homeless people grew in the 1980s as housing and social services cuts increased. After many years of advocacy and numerous revisions, President Ronald Reagan signed into the law the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act in 1987, a U.S. federal law that provides federal money for homeless shelter programs. Today, in 2018, there is an estimate of 3.5 million homeless people in the country with a shocking 40% being LGBT youth. Causes of homelessness in the United States include lack of affordable housing, having no family or supportive relatives, substance abuse, lack of needed services, unemployment, and low paying jobs. Homelessness in the United States affects many segments of the population, including families, children, domestic violence victims, ex-convicts, veterans, and the aged. When it comes to LGBT youth, the causes are different and they carry an extra burden of having nowhere to go or be accepted. According to the Alley Forney Center, one of the nation's leading homeless youth prevention services in New York City, LGBT youth comprise a disproportionate number of the homeless population and are eight times more likely to experience homelessness. In addition, they state that queer and trans youth experience greater level of sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, trauma, HIV infection, mental health issues, and substance abuse than their heterosexual counterparts as a result of rejection. Root causes for LGBT youth to become homeless often starts at home. Parents often reject their children's sexual orientation or gender identity and will close their doors on them in an attempt to teach them a lesson or make them change. The Alley Forney Center reports that more than 80% of their clients were kicked out of their homes for being who they are. It is estimated that 2 million youth will experience homelessness every year across the country. One major barrier for independence amongst LGBT youth is access to safe and affordable housing. Recently, a commission of homelessness from the New York City Mayor's Office stated there are over 60,000 unstably housed individuals, over 2,000 are youth, and 1,600 are LGBT roaming the streets. In New York City, there are 3,800 runaway queer youth, but only 250 beds to seeking to be filled. This is all for what's reported. Who knows the high number of kids actually home deprived? In addition, LGBT homeless youth experience limited access to emergency housing options that affirm their sexual orientation and or gender identity. Think of this. Young people are being kicked out of their homes, and as they're trying to find somewhere to stay, they're also then facing the same rejection and violence in shelters meant to protect them with other oppressed people. Another burden that LGBT youth face when experiencing homelessness is access to health services. According to the Center for American Progress, in a 2017 study, thousands of queer individuals who navigate the healthcare system say they face discrimination and mistreatment at doctor's offices. 20% said that a doctor or healthcare provider refused to see them because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. 30% said they experienced unwanted physical contact from a doctor or other healthcare provider, such as fondling, sexual assault, or rape. In my opinion, if you can't trust a doctor, 
what's the point of medical care? If the only care provided is discrimination that leads to more health burdens onto your life? No. Unfortunately, under the Trump administration, important federal health protections are being rolled back. On May 2nd, 2017, the Trump-Pence administration filed a motion indicating that the 1557 rule was under review, and in August, it announced that the Department of Health and Human Services had already written a draft proposal to roll back the rule. Section 1557 is part of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, and prohibits discrimination in health care and coverage. It bans discrimination on the basis of race, gender, national origin, sex, age, and disability in health programs that receive federal funding. This includes hospitals, doctor's offices, and most health insurances. Think about this. Instead of moving forward to ending the epidemic for vulnerable communities, we are instead moving backwards. People with privilege often expect us to magically become independent and find employment without understanding the layers that affects a person's psyche and hope to carry on when having been in crisis. I myself have struggled with suicidal ideation, and especially in times of not feeling safe in my own home or environment, where I believed at the time the only way out of this danger is to end my life. It is important for us to understand what is and isn't happening in our local and federal governments to end the epidemic of youth homelessness. It is not enough for youth to be directed to resources and have access to them, but it is necessary to have policies in place to protect them. When everyday people and communities come together and help create support, we all benefit. On a positive note, I wanted to share one hopeful cultural push in terms of housing support. On April 25th, 2018, the Joe Biden Foundation, headed by former Vice President Biden, has partnered with YMCA in an initiative to help LGBT youth and families navigate healthy living by developing a variety of strategies, including programs, member outreach, community partnership, and personnel training. In a CNN op-ed, Biden mentions how localities must do their part to support people vulnerable to discrimination. He states, Today, too many members of the LGBT community continue to face discrimination, harassment, rejection, and physical violence every day at school, work, in their neighborhoods, and even in their homes. This crisis is especially severe among youth. We mentioned before that LGBT youth are five times more likely to attempt suicide than their heterosexual peers. He has also pointed to issues like food insecurity, hate crimes, and poverty that affects queer people that needs addressing, and ended saying, every American deserves to be treated with dignity and respect, but too many in the queer and trans community are denied this basic human rights today. Remember that equality and opportunity for all is the only way to a better future. Another hopeful push is in New York City, where a great example of policy working to end homelessness is through the City Council's bill, Raise the Age, which has offered $20 million in funding to support LGBT youth in shelters up till the age of 25. Typically, shelters throw out youth once they're 18 or 21, forcing them to transition into an adult shelter. Too often, this transition is met with violence, homophobia, and transphobia from adults or seniors in those shelters. According to a study by the Legal Aid Society, young people given time to stay at youth shelters with access to specialized services have a better chance of gaining the confidence and skills they need to transition into adulthood, which includes the ability to find long-term housing. Advocates also watched the Raise the Age matter gain attention as new research showed the adult brain is not fully developed by 21, but continues to grow into individuals' late 20s. Now, I hope that today's episode helps you understand the causes and effects of youth who face homelessness and that you can humanize my experience as well as millions of others youth across the country. You can get involved to push for change by coming together to demand policies that protect people's rights to an affirming shelter, health care, and for continuing government support for programs that help people transition from being homeless and hopeless to being independent and thriving. If you're looking to becoming an ally and help an LGBT youth find independence, here are some tips for you. One, understand the risks these kids face and how homeless and runaway shelters are failing. Two, display LGBT supportive signs and symbols at your home, work, community centers, and places of worship. Three, create safe connections and affirming resources for homeless LGBT youth. Four, Listen, don't judge, and follow the direction of personal needs to be met. Five, ensure the safety of LGBT youth in homeless shelters and child welfare facilities. Six, become that healthy and loving parent, sibling, and or friend they might never had. Seven, 
be an advocate and an ally in every space you go. Now, I'd be crazy to cover everything about this topic as we don't have time, but as always, every movement needs allies, especially those that might not be impacted by the social issues at hand. You can always have a pivotal role in activism through educating yourself, volunteering for a good cause, and engaging in conversation with your peers and family. Up next, we invited a youth advocate who was once home deprived to talk about how their organizing is creating efficient services for our queer youth, both in the States and in Jamaica. Hey y'all, the slang of the day is BEAT, spelled B-E-A-T, which means to apply the perfect amount of makeup to your face, resulting in a flawless look. The term references the motion of constantly dabbing makeup sponge or a brush all over your face. An example is, her face is beat for the gods. Okay, honey? 